And so today is going to be, um, we're going to talk about confession, repentance, and forgiveness, mainly forgiveness. And um, I've got a few little um, activities for us to do before we start um, our teaching today. So, you know, I'm thinking about something that would make this um, work well. If y'all are willing to have an, um, an experiment, do an experiment with me, I'd like to have everybody unmute themselves. And because um, we're going to we're going to do something that's kind of interactive. So we might, you know, cancel each other out. I just want chaos to be OK for a few minutes. Um, sometimes folks have really loud things going on in their house, and that's why they need to be muted. If you need to do that, that's OK. But um, I'm going to have everybody at the beginning here. We're going to start out by having you look at one another and say to each other, you can do it at the same time or, or, or take turns, but I am going to mess up at times. I am going to mess up at times. Sometimes. I'm going to be wrong at times. I'm going to be wrong at times. Be wrong at times. Unlikely, I, but yeah. <laughs> oh, he don't have no one. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and I'm going to be ignorant at times. I'm going to be ignorant at times. Okay, we're not done yet. Here we go. Here's the second part. You're going to mess up at times. You're going to be wrong at times. And you're going to be ignorant at times. You're going to be ignorant at times. <laughs> All right. Now that we got that out of the way, <laughs> we can talk. We can talk really uh, frankly. So you know, my favorite part of that is the wrong, uh, the wrong part, the middle one. I'm going to be wrong, and you're going to be wrong. That's one of the biggest hurdles. Um, I, you, I don't know if anyone watches reruns or whatever, but there was a character on a TV show in the 70s, and he couldn't say the word wrong. He couldn't actually physically, and so it was a, a comical part of the sitcom. Um, but some of us really do have trouble being wrong. And so we want to, we want to think about that as a normal thing in life. So, you know, when we are... Um, when we are coming to one another, when we, there's a misunderstanding or when there's an offense, we always want to be open to that. It, and, and again, this is the hardest thing for some of us to do, but we can, we can begin kind of in a fun way in this class to say, oh, what if I didn't understand? What if I, what if I don't really know what my spouse needs? What if I need to listen more? Or what if I, what if I, what I did was hurtful and I was wrong? What do I do? How do I make amends for that? That's what we're going to talk about. So um, I still, you know, you guys all muted yourselves again. Oops, one more person to let in. Um, I still want to, I want to keep this going with the, uh, with the mics open. So there's not so much delay if you want to answer. Um, I have a, um, an exercise now that we're going to do before we get into, um, sorry, I, I want to type these in. So before we get into the teaching, so I'm going to ask you guys to just sh tell me what you think, offer your ideas on what it makes it, what makes it difficult to forgive someone. So what are, in, in your life or in, or, you know, at what you've seen, um, what can make it hard or difficult to forgive another person? And I'm going to type these up as we talk. I think for me, it's when the other person doesn't show remorse for what they've done. Okay. Or just kind of dismisses it as, well, that's not a big deal. Like, you're just being sensitive. Yeah. Kind of so, thing. Like, so, yeah, for me, it's just someone not showing remorse. So you are too sensitive. To oh wait, hold that, hold that thought just one second. And I'm going to make a comment. When the idea about being too sensitive, 
That's something that um, you really want to check yourself on. If you find yourself thinking that way about your fiance or dating partner, um, that's, that's a judgment and we need to really pull back, even if it's true, okay? Some of us are more sensitive than others. You know, my, I don't have a very tough skin. I'm, I'm growing in that area, but you know, so being sensitive is not a bad thing, but we do take responsibility for it. And I just think it's really important to know if you're sensitive to criticism. Um, it's, it's really important to think about that. But not, so this was, Dennis's was not sorry or if someone minimizes what they did. Both of those are, we're gonna, we're gonna address tonight. Okay, so next, who, who's called out? Me, Kayla, sorry, we're on the road. So I okay. apologize if you hear a lot of noise. But for, for me personally, it's acknowledgement. If you're not acknowledging, even if, if, if it's not something that you knew that offended me, if you don't acknowledge my feelings, I cannot forgive you. And it's hard for me. I'm working on it. God is working with me. But okay, not say, acknowledge. If you don't acknowledge my feelings, if you don't agree, that's fine. But just know that this is how I felt. And if you can't accept that, then I can't forgive you because then you don't understand or acknowledge that, hey, you were hurt. I'm sorry, even if I didn't know. Even if you don't say you're sorry at that moment, just acknowledge my feelings. Yeah, very good. We're, so not acknowledging the hurt, we're going we're gonna to address that as well. Okay, next. Anybody else? Can't be stuck already. I'll say, uh, for me, you said what's hard to forgive. Um, I guess I'll, I got a different spin of it. It's hard for me to feel bad. If I feel like I'm right, it's hard for me to like maybe apologize and say, you oh, know what? That's going to be that. next. Let's, let's hold on to that one. Oh, that's, okay. our next, that's our next section. So we're, right now we're working on when I have to forgive someone, what makes it difficult no. for me? <laughs> yeah, I think it, um, and this would have to do w way before the offense ever happened or uh, if you're not healed from something from your past, <laughs> then you're really sensitive to that area already. Yeah, so, okay, and, so and you, something. And you'll, you'll overreact to a situation that uh, may not have an overreaction, but because you didn't heal from that, it's already, like, at level nine instead of at a two. Yep, yep. So triggering past hurts, which, you know, you guys, you've been ex introduced to self-protective vows now, and so you know that, that that's a real possibility in this very close relationship when you're in this close proximity with another person um, triggering those past hurts is is like it's going to happen it's not if or when you know it, it's when okay someone else was gonna oh lena where'd you go lena <laughs> there you are um, i was just gonna say mine kind of goes along with the acknowledgement but it, i find it hard to forgive people when um they don't think that they've done something wrong so it's kind of like hard for the both of us because they don't want to apologize because they feel that they haven't done anything wrong. And it's hard for me to forgive them when they're like kind of giving a empty apology. So. All right. Yeah. Okay. That empty apology is pretty good. Um, so I would say that goes along with not sorry and not acknowledging. Um, and it's, and, and I think that uh, that, that also is something we're going to talk about today what it can look like. And, and even in the first, remember the first where it gave those examples of prayers that you can do, that you can use to say, okay, am I covering all these things? We, we want the person in our lives to, we want to be open to the fact that there's something we don't know about what happened. And also, as both Kayla and Lena have said, it's so important that that we say okay even if i don't see it i i need to acknowledge that this is what's happening with with my partner so next who else um, i was going to say when it's a family member or a close friend that hurts you and you know there's more of a trust there that you feel is broken okay um so so it might be the um the importance of the relationship 
Yeah. Okay. Anybody else? I'd say like repeat offenses are also get harder to forgive. Yeah. Uh, I'll give just a quick example of my dad. You know, like my parents are divorced, but like I haven't seen him in nearly 20 years, but sometimes he calls me or tries to start a relationship and it always starts, ends up with him, you know, asking me for money and, you know, I'm like, okay, forgive him. But it's been going on like that for nearly 20 years. So it's kind of hard, like, dude, I'm the son, like, I should probably be asking you for money, right? Uh, so that that's hard for me to continue to forgive him when he, you know, I'm like, oh, maybe this time is different. And, you know, he actually wants to build a relationship with, with me, but it's, at the end, it's always like, oh, well, do you have extra change or do you want to partner with me in this business deal? I'm like, oh, so that kind of was your end goal. Yeah. Uh, so that's yeah. hard for me to forgive, just continue, mm -hmm. continual offenses. Yeah, that's, that's a big one. Um, and it, and, I, and I'm, while you're using the example of your dad, I think it can happen in marriage. Like I said, it's the closest proximity we have in a relationship and, um, and we are with each other for a long time. And so there can be repeat offenses and it's one of the hardest things. Um, you know, I always love when someone brings this one up because Jesus spoke to it specifically, didn't he? When he said, how many times? Um, and, and the, you know, the disciples were like, 70 Lord, you know, <laughs> that's a lot. And, and he said 70 times, which is, I just translate that, you know, never ending completely. Uh, and, and so the, the question is, that doesn't mean it's not difficult or painful, like in Dennis's example, where he, his father, his, you know, he's wounded that his father is, is being like this. So he may have um, things that he needs to put in place in his relationship that are, you know, that, that because it's not healthy, but forgiveness is not dependent on the other person changing. Forgiveness doesn't mean you're going to be their best friend or, you know, that you're going to let them continue to hurt you. But it does, it does mean that between you and God and the other person, you're able to release. So we'll, we'll talk about that too. Um, let's see. Those are some good ones. Anybody want one last chance on this one and then we'll move on to. I would uh, say timing. Sometimes it could be the timing and what's going uh, on oh. and what you circumstances you're dealing with. Okay. This is Q and Kelly, everybody. They're going to be sharing. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to be sharing with us today. They're some of our coach couples. So uh, timing. So sometimes it's hard to forgive if the person is asking for forgiveness or if you need to forgive, but it's a really, are you thinking of like a, a really hard time in your life? Yeah, a really hard time or maybe dealing with difficult other circumstances that kind of okay. get in the way of um, having that moment to be able to forgive. Okay, yeah, that's good. And you know, again, we're gonna talk about forgiveness in a more um, thorough way, but um, but there are, there are a lot of things to think about when it comes to relationships. They're, and they're tender, they can be really tender. All right, we're going to move on to um, the next one, which Michael can start us out with. It is, what makes it difficult to ask forgiveness? Yeah, sorry You've for, uh, <laughs> jumping, jumping ahead there real quick, but that's okay. definitely for me, when I feel like I'm right and I'm not wrong, um, <laughs> yeah, it's, it can't be asked, hard to ask for forgiveness. I'll leave it at that. Okay, but that's a big one. It's a big one. If you if someone is offended and hurt, and you don't you don't agree that what they saw or experienced is what was actually happening, I mean, this is the mo the most common is example is I didn't mean to hurt you. You're like I didn't mean for that to come out that way, or I didn't want. That's not what my intention was, and so that falls under the the um, area of defending yourself, which needs to, needs, it has a place, but it needs to wait. It needs to be deferred. So you are sacrificing your need to be right or your, you know, wanting things to be just and fair 
as a, is as an adult and as a Christian, you're saying, okay, I'm going to surrender that part of my myself right now, and I'm going to be present to this other person as they as we we process what they went through, and then after the person has been heard, you get you take time and you say, you, you know, in light of what I've learned, what might I be able to do differently? Mm. Even if I don't think that I did what they thought I did, how could we do it different so that this wouldn't happen again? It's right. a big, yeah, it's, it's, you know, like, and I think, I think we are so justice oriented and fairness oriented in our world. And especially in, maybe I say, especially it's probably everywhere, but we know that here in our culture, it's gotta be fair. You know, everyone has to, every wrong has to be pointed out. Um, it, you know, we, Anyway, it's, it's a really big deal for us. And yet in, in Christian, you know, in scripture and what Jesus teaches, that's not the most important thing. Right. And, and so, yeah, so how do we love? You know, how do, how do we love better? All right, let's keep this going. What makes it difficult to, for you to ask someone to forgive you? I feel like a lot of the times it's not just like one or the other that's hurt, but like both parties are hurt. So like if I'm feeling hurt, I don't want to ask for forgiveness you know it's like why am i asking for forgiveness i'm feeling hurt too uh, wow yeah that's that's hopefully that doesn't happen a lot <laughs> you know i always say it, when when one person is having a hard time the other person can carry the weight oops we got somebody's um something going on there we go um so um when one person has something going on, the other person can kind of hold the weight. But when both people are really struggling, it, it can be it can be difficult. And you know that's when I say, um, when I say we really need to uh, to turn to Jesus. Then, like whatever you need to do, when both people are having a hard time, to say we're together, we're not going anywhere. Like Doug and Cindy said, we what we do, but but we need some time to get back to a better place. I need to spend time with the Lord. I need to go for a walk. Those kinds of things are really important. So, okay. When I'm hurt, it's hard to ask forgiveness when I've been hurt as well. What else? What? Unhappy or Hold on just like a second. It's Kayla, <laughs> is that who's speaking? Yes, ma'am. Okay, Kayla, I'm sorry. I, I can barely hey, hear you. I'm sorry, I'm in the car. Go um, ahead. It's, it's harder for, for both of us. We have to have that discussion. <laughs> oh. Kayla, you muted yourself different standpoint of like okay so what part did you play and that, that's hard for me because I know I'm, I'm the type of person I like to be right now I'm like uh okay you gotta step out of yourself what did you do to pay, play a part in it and that's hard for me sometimes I'm like no because this is why and I give I have a whole explanation but it's just like okay but you're still wrong and that's sometimes hard for me to ask for an apology if we're both saying hey you gotta acknowledge your part yeah. Okay. That's looking, yeah, looking at what part I played um, to, to be able to be honest with yourself and say, what, what was it that my part in this? Yeah. Okay. I was going to say, I think uh, just there's, there's several things that keep us from doing anything. Like it's maybe it's our shame, our pride, embarrassment. I mean, those are common things that keep us from even moving in general let alone asking for forgiveness or for forgiving other people. Yeah. Um, shame can be a big one. And one, one thing that goes along with that that I like to highlight is that also the repeat. I did it before. I've done it, you know, I, I do this all the time. I, I just feel like I can't apologize anymore. So the repeat offense is also ac applicable here, just like it is in asking um, or in uh, forgiving someone. Anything else? 
Anybody else I find think it, it hard? Uh, needs to be mentioned self protection, you know, like that. Yeah. I think that's a huge problem um, in relationships is self protection, you know, mm -hmm. um, that can keep you from apologizing uh, because you feel uh, hurt and you feel like, oh, it's going to happen again because it hasn't been acknowledged. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, uh, but, but, you know, there's a balance to that. You can't really be self-protective and then embrace someone at the same time. Well, it makes it harder, doesn't it? That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that the, those things, self-protection, of course, falls into being not being able to be wrong. And, you know, I, I feel like we never stop saying this, but it's because it's something to think about. In your family of origin, what was it like when someone had to admit being wrong? You talk about that, you know, talk about what it was like and, and also what, you know, like maybe um, someone who was always wrong and maybe mistreated or, you know, just really think through why you have the response you do to being wrong. Self-protection is one. Some people might be overly sorry all the time. They just feel like they have to apologize all the time for everything. Um, ask your forgiveness all the time when it's really it's a kind of too much. So you, you want to look back at your family of origin, at your role in your family, like we did in the very first week, and say, how can I, how can I admit when I've been wrong? Um, it's, it's a huge part of Christianity and a very um, unwelcome guest in American culture. So we want to, I think we're, I think this is good. I think we've gotten some good, um, a good start to this. So Thanks, you guys, for all your participation and for thinking through this with me. Um, you I know, have one more input, Kelly. Yes, yes, Amy. Uh, I would say it's hard for me to ask for forgiveness because you don't know if the person is going to accept. Uh, yeah. Um, and that's hard because you're like, okay, I put my best foot forward. I let down my pride, coming to you as humbly as I can but they're just not ready to accept yeah. apology. So you walk away feeling kind of defeated, um, but you can't, sometimes you can't blame them. It's not on your watch. It's on theirs to be willing to, to accept that, so. Yeah, that's well, where we I, are gonna talk about that. I'll add something to that. that it's for you, it's not for anybody else. Yeah. Yeah. The forgiveness is for you. If they don't receive it, that's on them. Okay, so you have to do your part first, and then if they want to do their part, then that's up to them, not you. Well, Aaron, you're, you're right. I was just going to say, we're, we're going to go over that in our teaching today, but, um, you know, it, it really is. Again, that's a, that's a misnomer. That's a mistreatment of the idea of forgiveness is saying, well, you know, they didn't forgive me. They won't forgive me. But, but what I think what maybe Aaron... I don't want to put words in your mouth, Aaron, but like when we, um, when we know that we're not forgiven, you know, when we don't ask forgiveness, it keeps us kind of in stuck in a place. Whereas when we, when we do what we're supposed to do, that's what's important. And you might remember me saying before a covenant says, I will do what I am supposed to do, what I said I will do, even if you don't. A contract says, well, if you don't do what you said you'll do, I don't have to do what I'll say I do, I'll do. So we're not looking to have a contract, a contract marriage. We're going to have a covenant where I am committed to doing the right thing, even when you're not able to, for whatever reason. And so thinking the best of one another. That was good. Yeah, and we're going to, I think we'll, Q and Kelly will be hitting on that. And, uh, and so I want you to think about being realistic about knowing that this is, uh, this is frequently going to be messy and, um, and you um, will grow. You know, you'll grow through these things. Our intent on giving deep teach teachings that go deep into these subjects is so that you can know that it's possible to come through something that's hard and have it be better than it was before. That's the key if we are courageous enough to go into it and not avoid it and not keep putting up the walls and the self-protection, 
we can actually come through the other side and be closer and, and better, um, better with one another. So, um, all right, let's see. I think it's time, Q and Kelly, for you to introduce yourselves. And I, um, I also just wanted to say that um, you can follow along with Q and Kelly in your um, participants guide. Let's see, that is, yeah, you'll find it. Um, the, it's on the, um, oh, I'm not in the right place. Sorry, Q and Kelly, I'll be just a minute. I wanna make sure everybody knows where we are. We're gonna start um, with, on page, <laughs> Four, um, about halfway down, forgiveness in marriage. So would you guys introduce, just tell us a little bit about yourselves, Q and Kelly, and then go ahead and start your teaching. Hello, everyone. I'm Kelly. This is my husband, Q. Yes. Um, we have been with Vineyard for about four years now. Um, and we actually started out with the journey to oneness prior to our marriage. So we did premarital classes, just like you guys are today. Um, and then we went through the marriage coaching and we became marriage coaches. Yes. So we'll be married three years on March 17th. Um, and we are a remarried couple. Yes. Um, we do have a blended family. So we have six kids between us. Yes. Two of them are adults, <laughs> and the rest are under 18, so, yes. Maybe, um, can you tell us what you do for work, what your, your career, professional careers are? Oh, yeah, of course. Um, I am actually a Franklin County caseworker. Um, I work for the Franklin County Child Support Enforcement Agency, so I am a support officer. Okay. Um, for me, um, I'm basically independent uh, contractor. I uh, deal with radon, so. Ah, okay. Very good. Well, let's go ahead and start. Um, you guys, we're not going to open the PowerPoint so that everybody can see each other, uh, okay. but you follow along in your, um, in your okay. manual there. All right, so we're, today we're going to be um, talking about forgiveness in marriage um, and just listening. Forgiveness in marriage is really big in relationships. Um, it's important that we forgive so that we can move forward. If we're not able to forgive each other, it's going to be hard to move forward and have a Christ-centered marriage. So in your participants, participants guide, the first slide talks about our scripture, 1 Colossians 3.13. And that scripture says to bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances that you have against one another. Forgive as the Lord has forgave you. So this scripture is important because we want to be able to make sure that we're forgiving each other on a regular basis. Um, and we have to be confident and comfortable to be able to forgive each other um, because we are in a relationship. Two people living together as one is a, considered a godly environment because we know that God honors a Christ-centered relationship. Um, but there also would be opportunities that will arise for offenses. Um, and we need to recognize our ability to be able to offend our partner, as well as our ability to be overly sensitive to a situation. Um, and it's also too important to keep in mind that we cannot control the behavior of our partner. Um, we must be willing you know, we must be willing to respond to each other in an appropriate way. Um, in the book of Luke 17, um, I don't know how familiar everyone is with reading the Bible, but we use scripture in our marriage to be able to guide us, to be able to keep us focused. Um, but in Luke chapter 17, Jesus tells us that we will be offended. Um, and, you know, there's danger. When we only forgive with our mind, if my husband offends me, and I'm thinking in my mind, maybe I should. That is not the same as actual forgiveness. We need to be intentional about forgiveness um, with our spouse. And I mean, just it's important to keep in mind that how we respond in our relationship towards each other when we're experiencing an offense is very crucial to the growth and the health of our relationship. 
So <clears throat> that's good. That's really good. So um, offenses and forgiveness. Um, if we focus on trying not to take offense, we will keep thinking about the offense. This is just how our minds work. Uh, people lure, are lured and enticed into sin as a result of desire. Um, wanting to uh, wanting wanting is the beginning of sin. Sinning. Uh, in James chapter one verse fourteen, it says, "But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed and enticed." Mm -hmm. So every sin or bad behavior begins with desire. Uh, here's an example. I want everybody to just clear your minds. Just think of a time where something was like somebody really, really, really offended you. Um, not saying like your kids. I'm talking about somebody really offended you. You know, if you think about it for a moment, um, if this part basically you would say in your mind, sometimes majority of people, I'm not sure, would say if this person says uh, one wrong word to me, I'm going to, you know, I'm just going to, have to let them have it. So. Um, to eliminate the bad behavior, we must first discover the desire behind it. Uh, the way to prevent taking offense is to address our desire for security. I know we just talked, I heard someone in there saying about uh, self-protecting yourself. That's one of the things that, are, that it is, so security. Um, as long as feelings of security are rooted in, your, in ourselves, the tendency to take offense even at the little things will exist. First uh, Peter chapter four, verse eight, it says, love covers a multitude of sins. Um, covering the offense of your spouse or your partner shows the love of God uh, that is growing in you. Um, so for example, about covering, um, perhaps, you know, like if someone you know, if you're offended, the first thing, the best thing to do is if you're covering, is to think to yourself, perhaps, you know, he didn't mean what he said, or perhaps she misunderstood me, perhaps they were having a bad day or wasn't uh, thinking straight. That's a good example. Um, here's an example uh, I have where I had to go ahead yesterday uh, to... Uh, <laughs> cover my cover my spouse uh with a when she was offended so me and my wife we were driving to the dentist's office and uh a dentist appointment and uh i told my wife that i was going to go ahead and because my birth my sorry my daughter's birthday is today so she'll be turning 12. so um so when we were driving to the dentist's office i said i was going to buy my daughter a laptop I like to talk about a, a tablet. tablet. <laughs> said a, laptop, a tablet. And um, my wife, she uh, she came out and she said, uh, she said, I want, uh, I want one. I want one too. Yeah, I want one too. <laughs> She's like, I want one too. And I said, and I was just joking with her. I said, hey, you can't, you know, get a tablet when I'm trying to buy a, a tablet for my daughter. So what happened is she took an offense to that, um, and she uh, got upset with me. So. This is what I did. It did sound a little snappy. Yeah, so. well, you know, <laughs> uh, you know, I'm trying to buy a tab, you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, uh, so what I did was um, for, you know, my wife, when she got upset, uh, when she was offended, uh, the first thing I did is I explained that I was joking. Um, I thought to myself, um, maybe she misunderstood me. Uh, and then I listened out what she said, and then I apologized for the offense. Um, but the last step of it is I didn't bring it back up again. Because you notice when you're totally offended, you'll bring it back up. I mean, especially when you're in a relationship. I'm bringing it back up. Yeah, you, yeah, you should bring <laughs> it back up. But, you know, you'll bring it back up down the road in a relationship. I mean, it could be anything, you know. You know, guys watching the Super Bowl today. I mean, tomorrow, you know, she might bring up something you – don't do because she asked you to do something. So I don't know. Um, to sum it up, uh, when we take offense, it is because someone has hurt us or frightened us. God has given us two ways to deal with the offense. First, by remembering that the other person also has things that hurt them and frighten them too. 
uh, when we love the offender and focus on their needs, uh, like covering and over and overlook, we will no longer notice the offense. Yes. And overlooking an offense is a godly trait, and we'll talk about that here shortly. Um, but on the next slide, I'm going to talk about what forgiveness is not. Um, and there's a couple bullet points here. Forgiveness is not about forgetting. <clears throat> forgiveness does not mean that we deny justice or the consequence of the offense. Forgiveness does not mean that we just deny what happened. Um, just to use a little analogy that I thought was interesting and very fitting. Um, for example, we cannot merely just sweep forgiveness under the rug. So if you, you're saying your house is clean, but you've swept everything under the rug, that's what we do when we deal with forgiveness. So unforgiveness prevents us from growing spiritually mature in our relationships, in our, in our marriage, in our premarital relationship. It prevents us from having a connection with our partner that we need to have for growth. It also prevents us from having a connection with God. Um, and God wants us to see each other as sons and daughters. Um, and unfortunately, if we're harboring any unforgiveness, it will not allow us. I can't see him as a son of God if I'm holding on to unforgiveness and not releasing it. Um, in the book of Genesis 127, God tells us that he created mankind in his image. He created male and he created female. Um, so we want to be able to see each other as sons and daughters of God. Um, and when we do forgive and we practice forgiveness, we honor God and God honors us. He honors a Christ-centered relationship and marriage. Um, so once we receive the forgiveness of God, we should be able, because God has freely forgiven us, so we should be able to forgive our spouses and be reconciled to God. Um, that's important. We want to be reconciled to God. We want to have a Christ-centered relationship. And I'm emphasizing that because it's very important. We can't have a Christ-centered relationship if we're holding on to unforgiveness. Um, two scriptures I want to share. Um, Luke 6, 31, one of my favorite ones, do to others as you would have them do to you. A second scripture would be Romans 12, 17. Do not repay evil for evil. Be careful and do what's right in the eyes of everyone. So we want to always do what's right in the eyes of everyone, including our spouse. We want our relationship to be a reflection of God's image. So these two scriptures express how forgiveness works in the kingdom of God. Um, I have one more analogy I want to share with you guys. Unforgiveness is like a cancer to the soul. When we harbor unforgiveness, it can kill us on the inside. It can also damage the relationships with our spouse and others that we love. Um, so we want to practice forgiveness. We want to approach our spouses. We want to approach our fences in a godly way all the time, as much as we can. We know that it's difficult sometimes. It's not something that we can just easily do because we have reservations at times. But we always want to make sure that we pray about it first and allow God to guide us on how we should approach the situation. Our response to any offense is crucial because it determines you know, the next step, it determines how we move forward in the relationship. Um, so we, again, it just, we must approach in a godly way at all times. Yeah, that's good. So, um, so forgiveness is something that is, uh, sorry, forgiveness is not a, uh, it's not a <clears throat> to other, it's not a gift to other people. I mean, it's a gift only God can give. Um, if you think about it, um, I don't know how many people have read about Jacob uh, in the Old Testament, Jacob the Dreamer. But if you remember the story about him and his, his brothers, um, after he went through all of that that he went through, um, Jacob forgave his brothers. Um, and then if you also read about David in the Old Testament, if you ever read a lot about that, I know it's a, a lot, you know, as far as on David. But um, David, during the time of Saul, um, he forgave Saul, um, if you saw the steps that he moved forward in. Um, and then also, if you read the New Testament, 
Jesus forgave us. So once again, love plays uh, as the main theme in forgiveness yes. and offense. Love meaning the love of God, um, not just, not love that, you know, like when you love someone, but the love of God that is in us, mm -hmm. um, which is the gift of God, which is through us. Um, when we forgive, we are allowing God to move in us. Um, we do not forgive, um, we do not forgive, I'm sorry, we do not forgive, we are setting ourselves up for future breakups or a divorce. Mm -hmm. uh, and without forgiveness, we are sabotaging our spiritual life. Mm -hmm. uh, God said, like Kelly said, because she uh, tiptoe, I mean, Jesus said, so she tiptoe right on what I was I, had put, I was about to talk about, but Jesus said, um, uh, uh, we should forgive someone uh, seven times 70. Mm -hmm. um, I know what, you know, a lot of times we, we think about that, we're like, well, you know, that's, um, a, lot. that's a lot, <laughs> that's impossible. You know, I mean, uh, I don't know who can do that and be honest about it or, you know, someone, you know, someone hurt, you know, they hurt me first. You know, mm -hmm. that's the things that we think about, you know, naturally in our minds. Well, no matter what we think about, think against it, remember this, we are here on this earth because of forgiveness. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that's something that we have to think about. Yeah, <laughs> 70, seven times 70 is a lot. Uh, yeah, <laughs> like Kelly lot. said earlier, it's ongoing throughout your relationship. Mm -hmm. um, so I would look at it as, we're not keeping numbers. We're not counting. We're just going to do as God wants us to do to forgive each other. Um, so I'm going to talk about on this slide what forgiveness is. Um, so we want to keep in mind that as we forgive, we lay down any entitlement. Okay. So we forgive, we lay down entitlement to any anger, to any, any bitterness, any self-pity. Uh, we lay down entitlement to any resentment. We extend grace. Forgiveness is extending grace and forgiveness is sharing. Um, so we don't want to allow those, those negative feelings to impact our perceptions. Um, we must understand that many conflicts will not be resolved. Um, and, and that's okay. That's okay that, that many conflicts will not be resolved. Um, but the need for each of us to be heard and understood is, is very important. It's paramount for us to continue to grow and have a, a healthy relationship. Sometimes we just have to agree to disagree um, and agree to move forward and not bring the past into our future relationship and our growth. Um, but as Kelly was talking about, when she was talking about, um, you know, overlooking offenses, and my husband just recently brought that up, that is a godly trait. Um, a godly trait when we can overlook an offense, in Proverbs 19, 11, we are told that a person's wisdom yields patience. It is to one's glory to overlook an offense. And that is a godly trait. But we also have to keep in mind that we can't always overlook an offense. Um, but we must not allow these things to continue to build up. Um, you know, when you overlook it and you overlook the next offense and you overlook the next offense, we're, we're expressing godly traits, but sometimes we have, there's some offenses that we just need to discuss. And they won't always have a resolution, but we need to come to um, a middle point where we can both agree to move forward. Um, but you wanna ask yourself, am I overlooking or am I stuffing the offense? Um, and then we wanna move on to extending grace, okay? God extends grace to us daily. We wake up with grace. God gives us grace. So we have to look at it. Who are we not to extend grace? Who am I not to extend grace to my spouse? Um, and sometimes we have to extend grace when they don't really deserve it. You know, we're like, you really don't deserve my grace, but God told me I'm, I need to extend it to you. So I might as well go ahead and do it. <laughs> So we, we have received that from God, so we should be able to pour that onto others. Um, and then sharing, forgiveness is sharing. 
But before we move on from having an offense to sharing the offense, we must be able to consult God about our approach. Why? Because hurt people hurt people. That's true. If I'm hurt, I don't know if he's hurt because he may not know what I'm feeling. But if I'm hurt, you know, I could hurt him in my approach if I do not consult God and get strength from God first and get direction from God on the best approach. So that means I'm not relying on my own understanding and my own feelings because sometimes feelings can get in the way of our true perceptions of how we should see each other and how we should be able to connect when we're dealing with an offense. Um, so you want to ask yourself, if you decide that, okay, maybe I should just approach my spouse. Maybe I won't talk to God about it this time, but maybe I'll just approach my spouse. We still should have a godly approach. We still should be able to go, with our, go to our spouse with love and kindness, get rid of any animosity, any bitterness, any judgments. Um, and that is the godly way to approach an offense. Um, and then like, I'm, I'm going to piggyback off of the example that he gave you guys today about the, because I, sometimes I don't let things go. Okay. I'm being transparent here. So you have, I have to, sometimes we have to think about it. If we approach, how bad is the offense? Is it something that's going to benefit us if I talk about him, to him about it? Or is it something that is going to hinder our progress, progress, meaning if I approach him about this, is this something that is important enough that I need to, or will it set us back? You know, um, and I think about it, will it open a can of worms? So just because I decided not to let the situation go, it actually kind of opened a can of worms because that one offense led to us pulling back stuff from before. So that means obviously these things were resolved so as I, as we mentioned before we have a blended family um you know and a blended family takes a lot of work a lot of patience a lot of prayer and um and we're doing great we're, we're getting through everything um we love god first and but back to the tablet situation now we have three three kids that we have family time with. Two of them are mine, one is his. And when the kids are here, we, you know, we shower them, the, you know, as much as we can. And this, this is a situation from Christmas time. So he's getting a tablet. We already got the tablet for her birthday. Her birthday's today. Yes. So, but when, yes, happy birthday, buddy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but Christmas time, this past Christmas, I bought my son a hoverboard and I bought my daughter a laptop. And um, I thought everything was fine. He hadn't mentioned any, anything. He ended up getting her, her um, was it Blackpink? Yeah. She likes this singing group called Blackpink. I have no idea who these chicks are, but his daughter loves them. So he ended up getting that. And I thought everything was fine. You know, we got the kids, the kids opened up their gifts and everything. Well, the conversation came up about the tablet because I'm, I started to feel as though, because he brings up the fact that um, my kids get this and his daughter doesn't get this. And he said, well, I can't get my daughter electronics. You bought your son a hoverboard. You bought your daughter a laptop, but Maddie didn't get any electronics because I'm always paying bills. And I said, we both pay bills, remember? <laughs> so, and I got a little offended because I felt like, he probably looks at the situation because I made an extra effort to get my son what he wanted, get my daughter what she wanted, that, you know, we didn't put in enough effort for Maddie. And I thought that we did. And I, you know, I didn't realize that he felt this way. So, you know, we kind of talked about it and we came to an understanding that, you know, we focus on the kids and we do everything we can for the kids and make sure that they have the things that they need. Um, and we have to understand that although we're a blended family and we do things together, we still have to be separate parents for our kids. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and I explained to him that this isn't a competition that I'm not trying to, because their father, you know, he out, he spends a lot of money on the kids. 
I don't have that, you know, I'm not able to do that, but I do what I can for them. And I, when I can do for them, I'll get them the things that they really want. So, you know, that hoverboard and that laptop was what I was really wanting to get. So he kind of felt like his daughter was left out of the electronic mix. Not that she didn't get anything, but as far as the electronics were concerned. Um, so I had to bring that to him and share that with him because I felt offended. I felt that, you know, he was thinking that I was leaving his daughter out and that's never my intention. So it was important that I finally, after all this time of bringing it up during the holidays and stuff that we finally were able to talk about it and, you know, come, come to terms and agreement. And this is a conversation that I'm sure will not ever come up again. So this is one hurdle that we've gotten past. So, um, and I just think it's important that we consult God about it first, because I think if I had not been, and maybe I was overly sensitive to the offense. And I think maybe if I had consulted God about it first, I probably wouldn't even approach a situation. It probably wasn't really necessary to approach it because it was just a misunderstanding that we both had. It wasn't something that was going to cause a hurt or an impact in our marriage. And that's what we have to really look at. Is it going to cause an impact in our marriage where we really can't move forward? Um, but if we can release it to God and we can forgive from our heart, um, it's probably not necessary to share how it hurt, you know? Um, so, but when you do decide to go to your partner, again, make sure it's, you know, the timing is good and that you have prayed about it and that you can openly share the offense because again, he may not even know that I'm struggling with something. So I want to be able to come to him and let him know that I'm struggling with this offense um, and be, you know, approaching in a godly way and just make sure that my response, um, you know, to him is, you know, not really to, is acknowledging his feelings in the situation as well about it. So I think that it's important that we believe in the best of our spouses and believe that we have the best intentions for each other. So. That's good. That's good. Yeah. That was a mouthful. That was a lot. I feel like I'm uh, on time out with God. Well, I had so, to get some of that here too. <laughs> so. Like, no, no. <laughs> but so you got to have their steps. So um, we're going to share the steps of forgiveness. Um, so I was going to ask you, Kelly, are there, <clears throat> are there slides going as we speak or no, the slides are not. Oh, okay. Um, well, no, they've got them in their participants' guide. Oh, okay. So they're they can following follow along. That. Okay, mm -hmm. sorry. So, um, so yes. Yeah, so we're going to talk about, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> steps of forgiving uh, for the, uh, the steps to forgiving your future uh, mate. Um, expressing your willingness to forgive is like a, like a love letter printed with your heart. I wanted to sound like Hallmark. Uh, yes, <laughs> uh, yes, willingness to forgive has to start with love because love is sacrifice. Uh, in the Bible, in, in um, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 2, it says, and it says, and walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Mm -hmm. So we must have love in us to forgive. So just remember that we are here on this earth because of forgiveness. Giving up your opinion uh, of getting even is hard because our opinion to us is valuable, but it will cost us our relationship when we don't leave it out. Um, there's a saying um, that I heard, I was listening on the, on the radio. It said, uh, when you are in the right, you can, af you can afford to keep your temper. And when you are in the wrong, you cannot afford to lose it. That was pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, repentance is not a show. You know, it's not, hey, we're going to go ahead and just, you know, repent. No, it's not a show. It is an action that shows that you will not do it no more. Um, instead of going 360, you're going 180. So you're going away from what you actually um, came in contact with. So, <clears throat> so saying you're sorry is not enough. 
it has to be woven into the fabric of your life, meaning that you got to show repentance. Um, you know, sometimes we say, you know, I'm sorry, we kind of walk away from it. And we're like, whatever, the next day, you know, the toilet seat is up, you know, and it's like, well, you know, she wants to go ahead and pee, <laughs> then she gets upset or, you know, those types of things, you know, the toothpaste isn't, you know, it's halfway empty and you don't squeeze it up to the top, <laughs> you know, toilet paper is, is it this way or is what? it that <laughs> I don't know. Never mind. I don't know. <laughs> I just went somewhere. All right. <laughs> okay. uh, all right. So, so, <clears throat> excuse me. So that's what you, that's what you would need to do for repentance. You have to show, you have to show through action of repentance. <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> awareness of ongoing nature, awareness of the ongoing nature of forgiveness um, we must keep in mind it is Jesus Christ that shows us every day that we are yes. alive in him, that his love for us in our sin and our resurrected lifestyle should reflect every time we find ourselves in a time of forgiveness. So it is very important we should be more like Jesus because of this. Yes. That was really good. I was really feeling that. We definitely should strive to be more like Jesus. I mean, that's what that's what that's what fills us. I mean, that's how we get our um, that's how we're able to repent. That's how we're able to forgive because we're growing each day to be more Christ-like. Um, and you can't do that without Jesus. Um, so I have the next few steps of forgiving your um, spouse or your mate. In your case, it would be your partner. Um, so step five would be inviting the redemption of Christ into the offense. Um, step six will be praying for God's blessing into the person's life. Um, and step seven would be making yourself available as God's instrument of love. Um, inviting the redemption of Christ into the offense is paramount to attainable growth. Um, you know, we're relying on Christ and not our own understanding. Um, we're not relying on our own way of thinking because that's how, you know, we can get into situations when we rely on our own feelings and our own way of thinking. We need to allow Christ to manifest and minister to us so that we can, you know, project the, you know, the true love and, and feelings of, to our spouse mm -hmm. um, and praying God's blessing to soften the heart, your heart. So we have to pray God's blessing so that I can soften my heart towards you. And my husband would have to pray to God to soften his heart towards me. That's expressing vulnerability. Um, it's important that we express that and be, have transparency in our um, relationship to one another. Um, so we make ourselves available you know, to God's love by our humbleness in his presence. Um, you know, let God know that God, I am willing. Um, we do not need to carry the weight of unforgiveness. We don't have to carry that into our uh, relationship and allow it to spill over into other things um, and allow it to affect the way we do things in the home. We don't have to carry that. We can pray and ask God to release that from us. Um, and we want to also, while we're praying for our spouse, we want to also ask God to forgive us of our offenses because we can offend um, just as well as being overly sensitive. So we want to make sure that we're praying and asking God for both um, and being able to release that to God um, so we can move forward into our relationships. And like, like we were talking about earlier, there's always going to be instances and situations where you're going to deal with offenses. You're going to, I mean, like Kelly said, it's going to be messy. A relationship is always a work in progress. Mm -hmm. um, nothing is peachy cream and perfect. Um, you know, we, we're still, although we're marriage coaches, we still have to work on things too. Um, you know, so, and we have to make sure that we are keeping God Christ center in our relationship. Um, and, you know, you must also prepare yourself. I have to prepare myself. You have to prepare yourself for the things that your spouse will ask for in forgiveness, you know, prepare yourself, get yourself, you know, right. Don't try to acknowledge, try to, you know, acknowledge or expect them to acknowledge what you think they should have not acknowledged when they ask for forgiveness for things. 
um, because we want to be thankful for the measure that they use. We want to be thankful for the measure of repentance and confession that they brought to us. Um, not what we think that they should have brought to us, but just because that they were vulnerable enough, they were transparent enough to, you know, ask for forgiveness. So we always want to be prepared for those things. Um, and we also just want to pray and ask God to forgive us, um, you know, in our marriages. Mm -hmm. Daily prayer. Um, find some like we find scripture sometimes and we kind of meditate on those scriptures and we ask God how we can apply that scripture in our marriage. So, yeah. all right. So, I want to make sure if everybody's awoke, um, you know, if you got any passwords, awake, or, awake, <laughs> you got passwords, I mean, you if you got passwords right now, me, you know, that you don't want to give to your uh. Um, may you you can switch them right now. You know, you, it's better to do it now. Uh, oh, sorry, I thought you guys were gonna do that. No, I'm <laughs> messing with you. <laughs> I just want to see y'all sweating. Anyways, um, so the next step is uh, identifying hurtful uh, patterns. Okay, um, hurtful patterns can destroy a relationship and cripple your relationship uh, with God and prayer life. So um, these are signs of uh, showing that you're uh, in a destructive uh, pattern. Um, hiding text messages, deleting internet uh, history, not trusting your partner with passwords and full access to your phone, um, no, no consistency in your daily routines, um, and basically also more resentment towards your towards your partner. Uh, most of these patterns are caused by unforgiveness to an offense that never, that, uh, that never shows repentance. Um, just like Israel in the Old Testament, um, their, hearts were <clears throat> their hearts were cold towards God because they wanted something more than what God was giving them. Mm -hmm. um, when we are looking for uh, other avenues uh, in our relationship, it will come to a dead end stop. Um, we have to forgive one another, repent, work together, and get past those offenses. Yes, that is very important. Um, you have to have access to each other's information. Um, you know, I've. Yeah, we got access. She has my. <laughs> Now, she just came to me one day, and I even noticed. I, don't, I mean, because I, I really, my phone, is it don't matter. But she uh, changed the, you know, we got iPhones, and you got to do face to open up a iPhone. But she put it to where there's dual face. I didn't know there's dual face on Yeah, iPhone. so my face can unlock his phone. So I'm sorry if you guys are out there like that. You know, man, you know, I thought it was just me. <laughs> I'm, we're messing up the whole game so for you guys. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. Um, and, and I think it's, it's, it's important. I mean, maybe if you don't want to go that far, I mean, I guess I understand, but yeah, I at care. the same time, you should, there shouldn't be any secrets. There shouldn't be, um, you shouldn't have to hide anything from your spouse. Um, you know, we have access to each other. We, you know, we share, um, and you know, if you're, if you're hiding things that can prevent problems because we all know what's happening behind the scenes or in the dark will eventually come to light. And you don't want that to um, have an effect on your relationship to where, you know, it just ends it. So, you know, you want to be open and transparent. Again, transparency is important. Um, you know, and I don't know, how would you feel if, if you know, um, your spouse didn't have or your I keep saying spouse because we're married, I apologize. Your partner, how would you feel if your partner um you wanted to see their phone and they refused? How would that make you feel? I mean, any thoughts on that? You could uh, mute yourself, any thoughts on that? I mean, how did how does how do you guys feel about that? For me, it would depend on the reason. I mean, I don't care. I would, you know, like if she needs to see my phone or I'm open to it, but if it's more so, let me check your your uh, social media, your Instagram or Facebook. I'm like, at one point, I mean, I don't mind, but it's like that balance between having that trust and, and yeah. then also just kind of like being overbearing just to see, trying to be a little right. nosy. So I would just say it depends on the reason, but in general, 
you know, it doesn't bother me, but you know, when you say you did the dual face monitor things, I'm like, <laughs> I don't know, but you know, we're not married yet. I, I can, yeah. I can see yeah, that's, that's really good. I mean, we're different. Um, we might be, we're just different, so. But you guys don't have to do that. But no. Um, no, she doesn't have a leash on me. So don't think, guys. So, I'm like, like, yeah, you're in trouble, dude. No, nah, no, nah, just. But, I mean, yeah, and that's important. I mean, Michael, you bring up a real important aspect. We have to be able to trust each other. And I trust him wholeheartedly, yeah. and he trusts me. Um, but, like you said, if, if you're being overbearing and wanting to see it all the time, that, that's a problem, too. But we also want to make sure that it's open, not right. to be overbearing, but because we have nothing to hide, right? So, exactly. you know, we can have our phones open. Um, right. But we're, we're a silly couple, so we do silly stuff like that um <laughs> uh, so but in conclusion um you know we want to take the offense to god first um you know if you can i, I think we should try to do that first um, and if you could take it to God address it between you and God you know if, if i take a situation to God i address it and God releases me from it then i don't need to bring it up again because we're going back and we're picking up what we're giving to God and we're picking it back up, you know, so um, we don't want to do that. Um, if you do take it to your partner, make sure you take it to your partner because you want to invite growth into your um, relationship and develop a more Christ-centered relationship, um, you know, and create space and make room and be verbal. You know, we have to forgive with our heart first. So our heart has to be genuine our heart has to be positioned to be able to forgive, but you want to make sure that you, when you forgive, it's, it's honest, it's true, it's genuine. I forgive you, you know, and you want to look each other eye to eye. Um, and remember to glorify God, you know, if when we're able to settle offenses and, you know, we can pray about it and it's over with, we put it behind us, glorify God because we didn't do that on our own. You know, the spirit was involved. Um, you know, the word says when two or three are gathered, gathered in my name, Jesus is in the midst of that. So we want to give God the glory that we were able to settle our offenses. Um, and that's pretty much it for us. Mm -hmm. Anybody have any questions, any questions or anything about have questions? How we do things. I know you guys probably think we're a little crazy or cuckoo, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Not at all. Yeah, Not they, at they, all. They like us. Yeah. Like us. We know. We know. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I, one thing that I really like to um, highlight at this is uh, on that last slide, one of the um, hurtful patterns was, was flirtations and, um, and irris or irresponsibility. But I think that um, what we want to highlight is when you marry one another, your relationships with the opposite sex um, are going to have to change. Um, and everybody gets to decide how they change. But, um, but what, I, what I think needs to be highlighted here is that if your spouse has a problem with someone of the opposite sex that you're in relationship with in any way, that needs to be a valid reason for you to listen. Okay, because our spouses see things that we don't see. Um, some, someone else might see it. I've dealt with couples who have had affairs. And once the affair comes out, people come out of the woodwork saying, I knew something was wrong. You know, or they, they had said over and over, like, I, you know, like, I should have said something, but I didn't. Or I did say something and they denied it. The, the thing is, is that, it, if you don't listen to your spouse, then you're not getting actually the whole story. Now, I, I offer that there are people that are exceptionally jealous or suspicious, and that's an unhealthy thing. But I'm talking about in a really, in a common relationship, just commonly, if someone has an issue, then you need to listen to that. I remember it, it like, like Kelly and Q, it sounds kind of extreme, but and when we got married, my husband said that he wanted it to be a, just a kind of a general thing that we would not ever be alone with the opposite sex. 
you know, and especially um, people that we work with, you know, driving places together, going out to lunch together, you know, anything like that. As a matter of fact, at the church, pastors are not allowed to drive together or go out just together with the opposite sex. Like it's, you know, it's just not even on the table. So, um, so there, you know, I, I don't want to beat this dead horse, but the thing is, is that you're above reproach, that there's this idea that I'm not incapable of being seduced. I'm not incapable of being deceived by myself or the other person. Someone else sees something I want to pay attention. And so um, what we do is we, when we have friends of the opposite sex, we have to adjust the relationship. And you are the best, just the best to decide what that's going to look like. Um, but I would say if I, I, I have heard people say, I'm not going to give up my friends for him or her. And if that's the case, then you really better stop and think about what you're doing, because this is a you, this is a very unique and very um, special relationship that no one else needs to have access to. And just the final thing I'll say is that if if you are getting something from someone else that you should be getting from your spouse, that is an emotional affair. Okay. We don't have to put that label on it, but it's at least unhealthy. So, and, and, it, and it can always morph into other things, but you want, you want to be going to your spouse for, for all of those things. If you can't, that's another thing to pay attention to. Why can't you? Why would you go outside your marriage for someone to listen to you of the opposite sex? Someone to pray for you, someone to do fun things with, you know, someone to flirt with. Those are really important things. So did my pastor thing there. Let you guys all think about that. Um, and I would say, if you have any struggles with it, let's talk. You know, my door, my phone, my computer <laughs> is always open for that. Um, so you know what I think I'd like to do now, um, looking at our time that's left, I want to, as I often do, review um, the worksheet that's in your um, in your homework. So it, it's on page seven. And you know, um, Q and Kelly and I were going to do this together, but I, I do think that time, because of time purposes, it would be good for me to just kind of lead us through. And Q and Kelly, you can chime in if you see something. I'll leave, leave you know, enough space for that. Um, but the one that we have in your um, in your participants guide is about being able to repent quickly. And um, I think that one thing that I'll say right off the top is the word quickly is relative, right? So quick for me may be different than quick for my husband. For my husband, mm -hmm. you know, it might be tomorrow would be quickly. For me, it might be five minutes ago as quickly, <laughs> you know, um, and, we, and it depends on whether you're the, the one who's been offended or not. But, um, but repenting, you know, this, can, this can go repenting. Um, I really think that um, when we ask this question, it brings up that level of difference that we have over what is quickly, you know, how, how soon do we need to? And Q and Kelly talked about the, um, the need for it to be genuine. You do not want to rush your partner to forgive when they're not ready. There's a lot of misuse of scripture where people say, Jesus says you have to forgive me. And you know, you're kind of like, like, that's true, right? But sometimes you're not caught up yet. You need to do more work. And so we never want to force the other person to do this. But back to repenting, when you repent quickly, um, you're, what you're saying is, I don't want this to be between us for any longer than it has to be. And so um, in this worksheet, there's a scripture from Proverbs. Um, and it says, he who conceals his sins does not prosper but whoever confesses and renounces them finds mercy. This is the um, New King James Version. You know, I'm sure we could probably, it sounds a little different, the NIV or um, any other more um, 
modern version, but the application here says the following application will be especially helpful. Confession is the first step toward repentance. So um, if I can come to my husband and say, you know, I realize that yesterday I was really struggling and I think that I was defensive when we talked about this or that, or, you know, this is the one I always like to bring up because it's so real. I, PMS started yesterday, hun, or today. And I am sorry for the way that I was tense when we talked or when I reacted really strongly. I need your help. You know, like I, and then it, it, it shifts. So I'm taking responsibility. I'm not making an excuse. I'm saying this is what's going on and I need your help. It brings us together. So um, confession is something we have to practice. You know, it's really gone away. If you were brought up in the Catholic church, you know that it was common to go to a priest. Well, um, we wanna be able to confess to one another. Um, sometimes the, the nature of it might be that you have a close friend or a pastor you confess with, but this is something we wanna be able to do with one another. Um, it, it means that you do not want to offend in that way again, whether intended or un unintended. Repentance is the first step in restoring trust, respect, and honor. Um, I'm not going to read the rest of this again for time. I want you all to read it, though, twice when, when you're thinking about it. Grace is receiving the goodwill of another person that is undeserved. So I may have hurt or offended. I don't deserve forgiveness or grace, but I sure want it. And as Q and Kelly said, we, we do unto others. You know, we give what we would want someone to give to us. Um, so then you do what words or phrases are, are stand out to you. Again, Q and Kelly talked about doing that just in general. It's one of the things about this worksheet. It's to help you to see that you can, you can hear the same scripture and hear different things different things are important to you. And it helps you to understand what's in your spouse or your future spouse's heart. You get to hear each other's hearts and that's really important. Um, remember we have that, that active listening part to that. So here's another one. Um, pride only breeds quarrels, but wisdom is found in those who take advice. Being able to receive correction or just modification from your spouse and saying, so what would, how would it be better? How could I do better for this? That's being able to receive something from them that you may, that, that pride may keep you from doing. So again, you're, how does this apply? And then there's principles here. Get, we're not gonna read them, um, but you guys read them. And then discussion questions. Uh, I would like to stop on this. Do you choose not to admit your failures because your future spouse or dating partner is not acknowledging when they've done wrong? You know, it's kind of like um, event, like revenge or like you're holding something, you're, you're withholding because the other person did. Remember, I will do the right thing regardless of whether my, my partner is or not. So just be aware of that. If you find yourself doing that, say so. You know, I realize that I'm not, I haven't done this because of this. Um, do you feel that being wrong makes you a bad future wife or husband? You know, again, that we go back to the I'm wrong. Can I say that? What does it mean to me? You guys might even be creative and come up with some language that doesn't trigger you like being wrong might. Um, Okay, so which one's most important? And tell each other why. You see how these, these two scriptures, probably that can, that can bring you like 10 to 30 minutes of conversation with one another about what you experience, about what Jesus is saying, um, about how that's different from the way that you saw it before. And so now uh, the worksheet section. You'll remember we did this part, I think last week, did we? Oh my, my memory just escaped me. Did we have a couple do this last week? Nobody's remembering. Okay, um, so the way that I have this done is if you say, this would be, you, you both agree that you repent quickly when you're wrong. Both of you say yes for yourselves and yes for each other. Then this is a strength and you ask each other, what do you like or appreciate about the way I repent quickly when I'm wrong? Super clear. 
just up front, but you want to you want to give the other person a chance to say what hits the mark for them. You, know, you may think it's it just it makes them feel safe, but they might say it makes me feel like I can be vulnerable with you. You know, so you you learn something there. Um, so then, um, what do you want to be different about the way? Of, so, so then, but for improvement questions, sorry. First, um, it says, what do you want to be different about the way I defend myself or my opinions? So see, this may be what's in the way of repenting, defending ourselves, protecting ourselves, not being able to be wrong. Um, and so you each, you ask each other, again, this depends. If one, one of you might say, um, you, you repent quickly when, um, when you're wrong. And, uh, and then the other one would say, well, but I don't feel like you do. And so then this becomes an improvement question. And remember, these are, um, these are like templates for you my, what I say is you can put any conflict in where it says, um, what do you want to be different about the way I fill in the blank? You can put any kind of disagreement or conflict in there. And the idea here is that you are listening to what the other person has to say, not forming your defense. I don't know if I've said it in this class, but I've heard people say that, I think it's like after 10 seconds or 20, whatever, some really short period of time, when you're talking, the other then that's as long as the other person listens before they start saying what they're going to what the response is going to be. They stop listening to you and they start forming their response in their heads. We've all done it. I'm not going to take a show of hands, but in this this process, what we're hoping will happen is it will slow you down. It will help you to say, "Okay, I've got to listen," and the reason you have to listen is because you're going to have to repeat what they said. Okay, that slows you down and has you tune into the other person, knowing that if needed, you have a chance later to talk about how you saw it. But if we can really both, if we can both say, okay, right now we're going to say, we're going to say what's going on with this person. Um, and then the next question is, how can I make it better? And I want to just stop here and highlight, we're going to talk about this more last, next week, but I want to highlight here. This is where, if my husband is asking improvement from me, this is where I have, he has to be able to say to me, what would make it better for him? Like, how, what things could I do? Because I might come up with three or four ideas and none of them hit the mark for him. It's, it's wrong to say to someone, well, you just need to do better. And you know what I, you, you know, you should know what I want, or you should know what's the right thing. Well, that may be true, but it puts the other person in a place of feeling like they can't please. They don't know how to, how to change. But when you give them suggestions that are positive, um, what we say here is measurable, reasonable and repeatable. So it's, it's not a real general thing. Like you just need to be more thoughtful. If you know, you need to think about me more. Well, that's kind of hard. What could they do to show you that they're thinking about you? You know, maybe write a note or, um, you know, like, it, like you might say, well, it would mean so much to me if you would, if we could go for a walk and talk about this or that. And they might say, yeah, that I think, okay, that's a good idea. I'll, we'll, we'll do that. We'll do that every day. Or they might say, no, that doesn't work because of this or that. And then you keep going until you land on something. Again, this is a, this is a model. This worksheet is not just, it's not the only thing that the way that there is to do it. This is just a model of being able to, um, to offer these things to one another, to be transparent, to be vulnerable with each other and to grow. And I think we all want that. I think we all want that in our relationships. So um, we, are, we are done for today there. I do want to point out though, uh, can you guys all look at page 11 and 12 and 13? Um, this, this topic has, I, I saw I just jumped. This topic has the most homework, biblical, focused homework. So you're, you can actually take this homework and do your own little devotional 
or study with this. And it, and it gives you the chance to really find out. So there's reading homework, and then there are, um, I'm scrolling down, scrolling down. This is, you get to read all of this. Um, and then there's, there are practical applications. So scriptures that you can look up and read and discuss and, um, and how you can pray with one another, suggestions on how to pray. So, all right, everybody unmute themselves. <laughs> We're kind of at the end. You know, what I want to do is I want to um, invite you to ask questions, but we're going we're gonna to let everyone, anyone who has to go, go, because, you know, we say we end at 1130. So um, thank you for being with us. I'm so happy to bring this to you. Thank you, Q and Kelly. We're really appreciative of you sharing. Thank you for having us. Thank yeah. you for having us. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a difficult thing to share from our relationship, but um, we hope that's a good model for all of us. And, um, and then we'll see you next week for conference resolution. So um, God bless you all. <laughs>